description. Okay, so recording is on. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, I'm really excited to be sharing with you the latest information around augmented reality experiences that are available for the Merge Cube. My name is Sue Carter, and I'll be your host for today's session. Co-hosting with me is Celia Koffer, and she'll be keeping an eye on the chat and answering any questions. We're project officers with the Computer Science Education and Research team from the University of Adelaide. So let's get started. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we work and live. And I recognize their continuing connection to land, water and community. I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and those of the future. Uh, I'm coming to you today from Northern Territory, uh, Darwin City, and this is the land of the Larrakia people. And I like to pay my respects to the Larrakia people. Um, for you, it would be really lovely if you could write in the chat the land in which you're coming from today. Next. So today's session is part of a webinar series and it's hosted by the CESA program, which has been funded by the Australian Government uh, Department of Education, Skills and Employment. We have a range of online courses, resources and professional learning for educators on the implementation of the digital technologies curriculum. You can read more and sign up to our newsletter at the caesarmooks.adelaide.edu.au link. Um, Celia, would you be able to pop that into the chat, please? So to start off with, it would be lovely to find out where you're joining us from today. And at the top of your screen, you'll see some annotation tools. If you click on view options and see the option that says annotate, and it would be great if you could put um, a mark using a drawing pencil or a stamp uh, and mark on this map of Australia where you're coming from today. I've put mine up there, I've put my picture um, because I'm coming to you from Darwin. Um, I see that we have a star in New South Wales and a heart uh, down there in Victoria. Wow, so that means there's only two people. Oh, there we go. And Tony's coming to us from ACT. Um, and thanks, Abigail. The annotate view uh, is in view options. So at the top of the screen, you should see the view options button. And then the third option down is annotate. And when you click on annotate, uh, there's a few stamps and drawing tools there. Uh, okay, no worries, thank you. So I can see that we've got people from South Australia, New South Wales and Victoria joining us today. So moving on, um, we're going to do a quick poll. And um, I'd like to know what your experience is with using Merge Cubes so I get a bit of an idea of the audience today. Um, Celia, you might need to release the poll. Or can I do it? Launch. There we go. So, Celia, if you, I'm not sure if you can click on the screen. Um, you'll see the options there. Um, the first option is you've never used Merge Cube, so this is a, a beginner thing for you. Um, maybe you've had a play with Merge Cubes. Um, have you taught a few lessons or you feel that you're very experienced? So 80% of our participants, 90%, one more to go. Maybe that's me. And I'll end the poll. It's the first time I've done a poll. And I'll share the results. 
Are they coming up on people's screens? Great. So I can see that um, we have a couple of people who are new to this space, uh, a number of people that have had a play, and there's some who have even taught a few lessons. So that's wonderful. Thank you for that. So let's move on. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to tell you I um, animated the page. Oh. <laughs> All right. So for those that chose the first and maybe second option, um, you'll get a lot out of today's session, but I would encourage you to uh, visit the AR simulations with Merge Cubes um, session that I did uh, about 18 months ago. That's part one of the series, and that goes through what augmented reality is, how it connects with the curriculum, what a Merge Cube is, and all the apps that uh, are available at that particular time. Um, and then for those that have had a few sessions in the classroom or a bit more experience, the second session on creating your own AR simulations with the Merge Cube, that was part two, goes into CoSpaces and Tinkercad and shows how you can build your own uh, augmented reality experiences and project them onto the Merge Cube uh, using some other software. So I would encourage people to also take a look at that one if you can. So let's have a look at uh, today's session and what we'll be looking at. First of all, I'll be reviewing a quick review of augmented reality and the Merge Cube uh, for those that uh, don't know anything about it. I'll give a quick review on the apps that are available that were in the other two sessions. I'm going to make some connections with the Australian curriculum and I'm using version nine today. Then I'd like to introduce you to the new Hollow Globe app that was released last month. After that, we'll have a look at a few more apps that I found that are available, two of which are free and they might be of interest to people. And then we're going to take a peek at the new and improved Merge EDU dashboard. After that, I'd like uh, some activity time for you to download the Hollow Globe app if it's available to you and to have a bit of a play. And then we'll finish up with how you could, um, one more click, uh, how we have some kits available through the CESAR uh, program. So let's have a quick review of what augmented reality is. I think the most um, known part of augmented reality would have to be Pokemon and people uh, running around the streets with phones and chasing what seems to be uh, a whole lot of superimposed little Pokemon characters. Basically, our augmented reality is to use our technology that we have, usually mobile phone, mobile technology, and it superimposes something into the real world. So if you're looking with your own eyes, it's not really there, but when you're looking through a device, there's this superimposed character or, or something that's there. It's like a digital layer of content into our physical environment and it's a bit like an illusion. Sometimes um, augmented reality does require a trigger like a QR code or in the case of the merge cubes, uh, the triggers on the side of the cube. And uh, it also gives students a chance to interact with some 3D simulations and bring some concepts into what seems like a real world situation. So now I'll review the Merge Cube for those that don't know anything about it. So the Merge Cube is a spongy foam cube. It's about seven by seven by seven and it has silver markings on it. And those silver markings are the triggers for the augmented reality experience. It does require uh, some apps. 
and uh, you'll see four of the apps uh, on the screen. However, there have been a number of updates to the apps. And if you see the picture that's moving around there, there's a student holding the cube, but we're looking through the lens of a, of a device and we're able to see the solar system with the sun in the, in the middle and all the planets rotating around. Now, if you don't have access to a merge cube, they range between $20 to $30. You can always make a paper one. And I do encourage people to maybe start in this space with their students, and the students can then take it home and share it with their family. So at the mergecube.com slash paper PDF site, um, you'll be able to download your own merge cube and make that. And just to have a quick look at the apps, um, the two main Merge EDU apps have been Merge Explorer and Object Viewer. And they're both don't downloadable from the App Store and from Google Play. Now the Explorer one enables you to, oh, we'll just go back a moment. The Explorer one enables you to see uh, things come to life. And there are a series of apps activities with introductions and with um, cards and the students can work through those and a series of questions. The object viewer is where you can uh, get some objects from like a major museum and put them out there into the real world and then students can start to interact and look at these particular objects as well as being able to upload your own objects that you create in places like uh, Tinkercad. So I just encourage you to make sure that you, when you do download them, look for the latest versions. And you can see on Google Play that these were updated uh, just a week ago on the 11th of May. So we're going to take a look at AR with MergeCube. And this is how students can learn and interact in an entirely new way. If you could press play, please, Celia. I just have to check that I shared it with sound because we did this just before we started. I'm not sure I checked if it's sound goes. So I start. don't think there's sound in this particular one, well, um, but thing. there's so a I couple of start. others. Yeah. So what you can see is the students are actually holding a merge cube, but what you can see are a number of superimposed images on it. So they're basically holding the 3D object in their hands. So you can have a galaxy there. You can have environmental things there. You can hold fossils in your hand. You can explore the earth and the different parts of it. Um, you can dissect a frog um, and look at DNA molecules. Um, so there are a range of already developed um, augmented reality uh, objects in MergeCube uh, EDU. So let's take a look at how this fits in with our technologies and digital literacy. I've chosen version nine because that was launched last week and there are strong connections obviously with version eight, but I did just wanna point out to people that um, there are new icons that are going to be available. So I would encourage people to uh, become familiar with those as well. So the digital technologies, sorry, the technologies curriculum is all about students creating solutions. And for digital technologies, they're creating digital solutions for preferred futures. So with developing augmented reality, it's for a purpose. And it's one example of how students can use their knowledge, their skills and their understandings to solve real world problems. On the left, you can see a copy of the new image for technologies, and it provides a snapshot of what the learning area is about, where we're focused on systems thinking, design thinking and computational thinking. On the right hand side, you'll see the new image for digital literacy. It's organised into four elements of practising digital safety and wellbeing, investigating information and data, creating and exchanging and managing and operating. And digital literacy, which was previously known as ICT capability, encompasses the knowledge and skills that our students need to create and manage and communicate and investigate 
uh, to solve problems. It's about assisting students to work collaboratively at school and in their lives beyond school. So I'd like to apply that in this next um, slide, which is about what our um, technologies look like in society. So for augmented reality, it is a visualisation tool. Um, and it's powerful. Uh, it allows an object or a concept to be brought into the real world. And it's being used right now, helping medical students to examine anatomy. It's about visualising microscopic particles in the air to look at what pollutants are there. It's being used with um, students with disabilities to do virtual job interviews and training in a system which feels like a safe environment to practice their skills and reduce their anxiety. It's used as an annotation tool and it's a guide for helping people to complete tasks or navigating new environments. Um, it's being used right now helping visually impaired people to see using the AR through a device where they can detect the location of people within their environment and also helping to recognise faces. And it uh, is a storytelling tool. So it's providing new ways of being creative and expressing yourself, such as helping blind people to experience artworks where they put their hands on gloves, their haptic gloves, and they use them to see these 3D visual sculptures like Michelangelo's David through a series of touch and vibrations in the fingertips and their palms of their hands. It's currently being used in the healthcare system and in engineering. Real estate agents are using it where they're visually imposing furniture in empty homes. Retail have been um, trying different forms of augmented reality, as do the military. It's being used in the manufacturing sector and also education. So it's already out there and we really wanna make sure that our students are part of this world. So right now, I'd like to introduce you to the newest Merge app. It's called Hologlobe. And again, available on the App Store and Google Play. It was released in April. And this brings real-time national oceanic and atmospheric in administration information, along with NASA information on data, and it simulates it on the Merge Cube. So it's providing stunning views of the earth and all the processes and systems, and it's right in the palm of your students' hands. So Hello Globe is a free resource. It's for K-12 students, educators, and even citizen scientists to learn more about the earth using real scientific data, including rainfall, cloud coverage, ocean and land temperatures, wind, uh, sorry, wildfires, snowfalls, uh, and other forms of mixed reality. So when we're looking at data in our digital technologies curriculum, then something like Hollow Globe would be a fantastic resource to use in real world data situations. Students will be able to use it to study trends, make predictions, and uh, use real-time and historical satellite data. So uh, before you use it, please make sure that you've downloaded the latest version because otherwise you won't have the latest information that's there. So how does this work? Basically, you launch the app, you look at it on a device, you aim it at the Merge Cube, and then the students will experience something of the world, depending on which topic you choose. The augmented reality happens through the camera of the device, and it's superimposing the image onto the cube. So here is this opportunity for an interactive experience in the palm of your hand. There are four options, four modes in which you can use Hologlobe. The first one is using the cube. And it's a lot more fun for the students when they're holding the cube in their hand 
and being able to turn it around. However, you can also use world mode. And world mode is like stamping it into your space. So when you're holding up your device, uh, you will see as the girl is in that second picture, you can see the globe and you can actually physically move right around it as though it's right there in your room, in your space. There's also a 3D option and um, you can use that on your device. I don't know a lot about that one. I haven't had any experience with that yet. Or what you can do is place a VR headset on and using the mobile uh, phone in the VR headset, then students can again walk around and feel like it's part of their real world. Um, so we'll play this video just so you can get an idea of what headset mode looks like. Okay, so we might have a false start if I have to start it again to get the sound going. Let's see how we go. Can you hear the sound? Yeah, I can hear sound. So on your screen at the moment, you can see where the clouds are. I did notice when I had a play with this earlier today that I was getting a good view of the northern hemisphere. I put mine on the ground. Um, so it might be nice if the students have it up high like that so that you can see the southern hemisphere as well. And there are tools within the app that enable you to move it around. And when I had it launched today, it actually had today's date as well. Uh, and note that the date is in an American form. So that's just a little view of what it looks like from the headset mode. Not sure what happened there. So that might be me. All right. So um, let's take a look at some of these magnificent activities that are available through the Hollow Globe. First of all, we can look at vegetation. Uh, when you, sorry, when you first open the app, there are 12 topics that you can choose from. Um, and you can scroll through them to see them and then select the one that you want to get started with. So up on the screen there, I can see vegetation is the first one. This is a great starter. If you're looking at global deforestation, you're looking at areas within the world uh, that are green and not so green and make some comparisons about what's happening uh, across the deforestation um, picture. You can go into the ice one and start to look at where the polar caps are, the ice that's there, and look at it over a period of time and actually see uh, what melting has occurred around the polar apps. There's one on world maps that you can study and then there's fires and the fire storms give you an idea of destruction that has occurred across our world. The satellites one shows you two satellites uh, that are orbiting the earth and you can see them in real time uh, and then you can look at the earth itself in real time. The next set, uh, temperature. Very, very interesting uh, activity there. Great starter again, if you're looking at global warming or you're looking at patterns of heat uh, across the world or in particular countries, um, there's a great way of picking up some data and students are seeing that visually. The precipitation one, all about rain and you can see where the different uh, formations are of rain around the world which when you have uh, extended flooding um, is, is obvious to the students as well. And you've also got your cloud formations and you can actually see how the clouds are swirling around and how they're um, uh, situated uh, from a, a global picture as though you're sitting on the moon. Then there's the drought option and you can see the different droughts over time as well as the seasons. Uh, and the final one is earthquakes. And that's an activity that I'll explore in a little bit more uh, depth with you today. 
So when you choose the earthquakes option, it opens up an introduction and it gives the students a little bit of information about the National Earthquake Information Centre. And it talks about how there are earthquakes uh, every day, but a lot of them are quite weak. And it goes into where your different earthquake belts are as well. Uh, then you've got your real-time earthquake data. And so you can see some imagery of where your earthquakes are happening around the world, anything that's greater than two and a half on the Richter scale, and they will come up in their different colours as to how recent they are. Very much like going on to the website, the earthquake website, and seeing what earthquakes have occurred. And then you can ask students a range of different questions like, you know, which parts of the world have the most activity or why is there activity happening in certain parts? Then we move on to earthquake time lapse. So this is where you're able to see the data over the period of a year and see what patterns are emerging when it, um, uh, it comes to understanding earthquakes. You may have also noticed that next to those, there are um, icons. And uh, on the next screen, I've got two icons to unpack with you. One is a speaker with a book. And throughout all of the Merge Cube apps now, what you have is the ability to listen to somebody reading out the information. So this is a great tool to have when you've got your EALD learners or students with disabilities or students with reading difficulties. Um, this is a, a great way for them to have the information read to them as well. And it can go over it a number of times. There's also a new icon and that is the share one where you've got the single uh, round dot and you're sharing the information out. So this is an ability to uh, bring up a QR code and then using a different device, you can go over the QR code and that information can actually be read on another device without the app. So there's still that ability to share in your classroom. So we'll do a little bit more with Hollow Globe uh, in about 20 minutes. Um, I'd like to move on now just to show you uh, three other uh, apps that are newish to the Merge Cube community. This first one is called Moment AR. And it was developed by a chap who has done a lot of work in the psychological, therapeutic and counselling sessions. Uh, um, careers and uh, connecting with specialists to help support students who have uh, feelings, uh, emotions or social interaction issues, great for students with autism. Um, and basically he's developed this app where the Merge Cube is the tool for communication and language learning in the classroom. So students are able to describe the emotions that they see uh, on the cube. And you'll see that there are uh, different uh, characters on each side of the cube. And as you turn the cube around, those characters come up and you can see someone who's sad or someone who's angry, um, someone who feels withdrawn. And the students have this opportunity to be able to talk about these things. You can also see social skills where students are learning to interact with each other uh, or they're learning how to kick a ball uh, to each other and they're talking about positive behaviours that are there. So um, Celia, uh, if you want to press play on that one, we'll just see this particular app in action. Hi. I'm really excited about a brand new app called Moment by Color Glass. This app uses some of the latest technology in augmented reality to help kids with autism learn language skills. The app works using a merge cube, which you can buy on Amazon or at Walmart. To activate, simply open the app and point it towards the cube, and you immediately see characters come to life. When this app was being created, I worked with the developers to help support three areas kids with autism struggle with the most abstract language, emotions, and social pragmatics. The first layer of the app helps children understand and start using verbs. 
Take the classes and have challenges, learning action words, which is very abstract. The moments act is great because it demonstrates each action for animation with really interesting characters. It's also set up with three tiers of language learning. So you can start at tier one with easier verbs and then eventually progress to tier three for more challenging verbs. Another area that children with autism struggle with is understanding and communicating emotions. So in this app, there are six different characters, and each character represents six different emotions. Happiness, anger, fear, sadness, boredom, and disgust. You click on a character, and it introduces six variations of that specific emotion. This can help children better identify with their own emotions and learn how to start communicating about them. The last area of the app focuses on social pragmatic skills, which we know is an area that children with autism struggle with. In this layer of the app, there are various social teams that you're able to talk to with older kids who are struggling with pragmatic skills. I started using this app with some of my clients and they love it. It's super motivating and educational. Now, I'd love to hear from you guys. Have you tried this app? Tell me what you think in the comments below. So for our students with special needs, this app um, is really worth investigating and um, and I'm working through. The next one I want to show you. Hey guys. Sorry, is uh, 50 to 57 degrees north. Just wait for it to come up on the screen. There we go. And the reason why I wanted to share this one with you today is though it's not that it's um, new so much that it's free. It used to cost $2.99, but at the moment it's free on the App Store. So this one is a story about two cousins that are shipwrecked on a remote island in Alaska. And it's a bit like a survival adventure. It's up to you which way you go to survive or to escape or to discover why there are all, the ready, all these security cameras in the middle of nowhere on this island. It's a quite a gripping story with hundreds of decisions and multiple endings depending on the choices that you make. There are also gorgeous illustrations um, for students to interact with. And the last um, app that I wanted to show you is this Anatomy AR. Now this one does cost $1.49, but it is, uh, Sorry, it um, shows you. It shows you the three main um, organs of our body: the heart, the brain, and the lungs. And it examines how they operate. So they're using the latest technology to take a closer look at these vital organs. Again, this is probably more suited to older students as you start to learn about dissection and all the different elements within the body, uh, sorry, within those organs. And uh, apps like this are actually being used in medical schools to assist students with understanding uh, how the different uh, parts of the body function. It's quite amazing to, to see this type of technology being used. And I believe even in operations now, they're able to use augmented reality to actually assist getting into uh, tight corners in, in different parts of people's bodies and actually do some medical procedures. So yeah, this is a, a quite an interesting app to, to investigate. Okay, I'm gonna pause at that point and uh, we're going to put up another poll. And this poll then is to find out 
which Merge app that I presented to you today interests you the most? And if you just click on the screen three times, Celia, uh, the options will come up. So first of all, we looked at Hologlobe, which is giving you real-time Earth data. Moment AR, which is very uh, applicable to our special needs students. 57 degrees north, which would fit um, uh, English lessons or uh, maybe even history lessons in the Haas learning area. Or Anatomy AR, which would be very good for science. I'm very keen to see which one uh, appeals to you the most. So I'm going to um, put up the next poll and launch that. And ask if you could signify which one is of most interest. Couple more people to go. Okay, I'll end the poll at that point and share the results. So you can see those results on the screen, Celia. So Hollow Globe looks like um, is uh, the most popular one and I'm very keen to hear how people go with it. Um, at the moment, AR, I think, is a very specialised area. Uh, and the same with anatomy, but that would also suit your secondary school teachers. Thanks, Maria, for saying what your se second choice would be as well. All right, um, Celia, I'm just going to pause then before we go on and just find out if there are any questions in the chat. Nothing I've seen so far, but this is an opportunity for anybody to ask for something. Yeah, um, I'd be curious to know if there are any uh, questions that people have or any comments that they would like to make, if they could pop those into the chat. Okay, so can you see the chat? Um, I can, sort of, yes. Um, hard to find the Moment app on the App Store. I think I... I think I found it actually via the website that I had on the screen. So I would type in Moment AR in a Google search and then look on the website for that one. Uh, what was the other question that came up then, Celia? What age would 57 North suit? Yeah, look, I think that that would be your upper primary, lower secondary, definitely. Yeah, I think that's all for the moment. Okay, then. So thoroughly, so it's hard to, you know. Okay, well, look, we're halfway through our session today, and um, I'm going to share with you now the Merge uh, Education Dashboard. Now, if you're... Oh, let's go back one. Okay, so moving on. Yep. The Merge... Ed oh, back one. The Merge yep. Education uh, Dashboard has uh, expanded significantly. And we'll start with the previous slide, that's the home, what's new. Okay. And uh, to... That's the next one. That's it, yeah. And so uh, if you want to get access to the dashboard, you can have a free um, trial uh, for 30 days and try it out. Or if you buy a Merge Cube, there's an activation code at the bottom of the Merge Cube and you can type that in and that will also activate the ability to look at the dashboard. Um, the dashboard used to just have the teacher and the students and the My Stuff area and then a couple of apps. But as you can see now, it has expanded. So this first section on what's new gives you an idea of all the new activities that have been uploaded in uh, recent months and all the activities that are there <clears throat> are um, designed by teachers. If we go on to the next section, I'm going to go jump down to the science section. 
uh, the students um, the students are added in by the teacher, so the students can uh, access it through a code. You don't need to pay for students. Um, you just pay a license. Or if you're going to use the free activation, then the students, it might only be one person who can be in there at a time. Sue, so there's a question which is probably best just to cover now because you're talking about it. Do the students need access to the dashboard or just the teacher? The, if the teacher needs the access to the dashboard, the students get access to the information via the app. But you can record where your students are at in the dashboard. But the dashboard is primarily for teachers, but they can add their students in there. But you would need to think about um, data security issues and whether you actually want your students' identity in there. And you can um, have uh, made up identities, but then you don't know which student is which. So it can become a bit complicated. Different states and territories have different regulations around this type of thing in terms of putting student data into uh, apps that are offshore for Australia. So you want to make sure that you understood your jurisdiction's regulations around that. So I guess the point is, do students need it or not? If they don't need it, just the teacher accesses it, that's, that's good. No, the teacher can just send it through the sharing link. Cool. Yes. So there are lots of aids here that you can see. And these aids are more around objects and how objects are um, superimposed into the real world and it shows how different systems work so for instance if we clicked on the circulatory system you would see how the circulatory system is operating with all the blood uh, and all the different hormones and all the different parts that help uh, make your blood um, nutritious around your body the next one is science simulations, I think. Yeah, when I click and it works, that's it. There it is, yep. And so again, we're coming from a science perspective of all the different possibilities of what's going on with different systems. So instance, for a frog's life, you would actually see how um, the frog's um, cycle works and you can also dissect a frog as well. The same with the plants, uh, looking at the plant life cycle. So a lot of these different, a lot of these different um, simulations fit in with our science curriculum. You would need to look at where within our curriculum they fit, whether it's in a year five or a year six, a year four, year seven, year eight, and make sure they match up. One of my favourite ones there is the human anatomy and Mr. Body. Um, however, you'll find with the version nine of the curriculum that there is very little biology that's taught in the primary schools and most of it is moved into the secondary school area. But if you look at something like Beyond Our Solar System or Galactic Explorer, these fit into Earth and Beyond in our science curriculum. Uh, next, we have the globe activities. And as I was showing you before, this is where hollow globe fits in. And this is where all these activities can be found within the teacher's dashboard. And finally, we've got some activity plans. And these are all ex science activities. There are a whole lot of learning plan lesson plans there for you to go through uh, with your students and uh, it explains how the science uh, simulations fit with teaching in your classroom over uh, X amount of lessons. A new area that's uh, just been released and is still being uh, built up is the STEM projects. And we have in there five projects at the moment, all of them obviously future focused, which fits with our technologies curriculum, which is all about our preferred futures. So if we have a look at the first one, STEM Future Builders, 
uh, it basically gives you a uh, idea of what you're going to focus on. So pollution comes in many forms and we're looking at how pollution is in densely populated areas and it gives the students uh, an overview of what the project is going to be about and then what they need to do as part of their research, uh, the materials, the impact that they're going to consider and it fits beautifully into our she concepts for science as well. So you'll be able to see some dovetailing now of how our digital technologies curriculum along with our science curriculum uh, come together nicely and uh, can be presented with a, a STEM lens. Oh, sorry, and just one other thing there too. Uh, there are a number of worksheets for the students, uh, for the teacher to print out for the students to work through as well. So merge education apps, um, they're the bottom part of your dashboard and they just explain what they are, but you still need to download the apps onto a device in order to use them. So again, as I said, the Explorer has over 100 interactive science simulations for both primary and middle school students. Um, the Object Viewer has over a thousand digital teaching aids and they're all three dimensional models. And then of course we've got Hollow Globe, which is our real time NOAA and NASA satellite data and simulations as well. Um, so have you been, have you looked at those worksheets? Um, you want to know if they're editable digital? Yeah, I don't think, no, the worksheets are in PDF format and so they're not editable. Um, but if you used um, Adobe Acrobat uh, and you go into the editing aspect of it, then you would be able to do that. Right, so let's look at some tips for teaching with Merge Cubes today. So um, if, you, if you only have the one Merge Cube in your classroom, what you might like to do is connect the Merge Cube to your mobile device via a projector and have it up on a screen for students to, everybody to see. Uh, you could try creating, if you've got a few cubes, you could try having some AR stations for students to work on uh, around the classroom so that they're working in a collaborative group. Another idea is to suspend a merge cube in the air uh, with some fishing line and allow students to actually physically walk around it. Uh, you could use the screen recording uh, option on your device and you could actually record what the students are saying uh, as they're explaining what they've learnt with their augmented reality science simulation. And it's a good idea to um, join the Merge Educators Facebook group as well uh, to learn about lots of new ideas. Celia, can you press on the um, play button there? And you'll be able to see a simulation here of different options. Something that's new with Merge Cube is that you're able to make your objects much larger. And you see that large bee, this large frog um, into your real world environment. However, um, if you don't have access to Merge Cubes, as I said earlier, you can do paper Merge Cubes. And I've done these with students and they absolutely love it. Um, cutting them out, gluing them together, then getting a device and uh, walking around it and seeing those simulations come to life. However, I'd like to show you this one, which is the do-it-yourself giant merge cube. You can actually make your own mega merge cube in the classroom. Uh, so a number of students can be walking around it. So what um, he's done is print the merge cube 
onto paper and then glue that onto cardboard. And through this video, um, Gabe actually goes through the process of how to do it. So first of all, you need to photocopy on A3 paper each side of the merge cube. Cut that out and stick it on card. If you just have it on paper, it's way too flimsy. So we did this at a uh, STEM science activity at a school uh, for their science week activities. And um, yeah, the students really love doing these. So Dee says that she has made giant ones as well. Great. Uh, on the screen while he's um, putting that together, you'll see at the bottom there docs.google.com presentation. That's actually a uh, six page, oops, sorry, sorry. just go back. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, That's okay. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. Um, it's a, a document, six page document, and he's already put the pages, uh, the, the merge cube sides on there. So all you have to do is print them out. It's a much easier way of, um, of doing it than having to expand the merge cube, the paper one yourself. Oh Nearly God. there. Whoopsies. <laughs> one more. <laughs> one more. Yep. There we go. Yeah. All right. So we'll go on then um, to the next bit. Now, it's really important that you know what devices are compatible as well to be able to move into this augmented reality world. So your uh, Merge Cube apps are definitely supported in the Apple uh, operating system as well as the Android system. And that's why things are available on both uh, the App Store and on Google Play although I did notice one thing wasn't on Google Play and it might have been Moment AR, um, as mentioned earlier. But what about compatibility with Chromebooks? Because lots of schools are choosing to go Chromebooks now um, just because of the cost factor and keeping things in uh, the cloud. These work with some Chromebooks, but not all Chromebooks. So at the support merge edu site, there's an article on is my device compatible and it goes through all the different devices that are and aren't compatible. And there is a separate section on Chromebooks to say it works with some, but it doesn't work with others. So it's a good idea to test some things out before you get started uh, on investing in augmented reality of this type. Okay, so um, it's now five to five, and uh, this is the your turn activity. If people would like to, and it would be helpful if you write in the chat here, if you would like to download the Hollow Globe um, Merge app on your mobile device that might actually be sitting next to you, uh, and launch the app and have a look at um, some of the uh, options, the topics that are there, such as clouds, um, read the introduction, and then choose a mode that you'd like to have a, a, a go at. So you don't actually need the merge cube as the trigger, but we do have one on the screen um, to help you if you would like to use it. So just write in the chat if people are going to have a go at that or if you would prefer me to move on and finish up. I can't see the chat. Uh, there's, there's no comments in the chat at the moment. Everyone's very quiet. Uh, Clark's happy to, he's, he's used, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter to me, he's used merge, merge cubes before. Perhaps move yeah. on. So. Okay. All right, then. I'll move on and happy to move on. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll um, move on to the next one then, um, Celia, which is about the lending library. We've got a few people in this room. In yeah. The room who That's library. okay. That's okay. <laughs> so... so the lending library has um, some Merge Cube kits that you can borrow. 
And uh, in your kit, you'll find that there are eight Merge Cubes available and four iPads. And we have a range of lesson plans that are there that range from year five through to year eight. And they all fit with the science simulations. So we don't have the hollow globe ones there at this point in time. Um, so if you are interested, uh, go to the caesarmooks.adelaide.edu.au lending library and pop in a request there. And um, hopefully a merge cube kit can be sent out to you. So today I'd just like to uh, reference um, some people that have helped me with MergeCube. And one of those is Jamie Donnelly. She's a MergeCube ambassador. She has her own website called ARVR in EDU. And most things I've learned have been through her. Um, and you can find out more at her website. And also the Merge EDU website um, has lots and lots of helpful support, getting started information. Um, and there are a number of other websites there where you'll find um, how teachers have actually used Merge Cubes in the classroom or guides to the different apps. Um, now, last month I became a Merge Cube ambassador and so this has been my first ambassador session uh, with lots of new information there today. So uh, thank you for being patient with me as I work through all these new tools. So there's, there's a few people in the room who have used them. I wonder if I'm putting yep. them on the spot, um, if they'd like to share their experiences with any of those. So, I um, think that would Clark, be great. Clark yeah. or Maria, I'm naming you because I know you. Um, uh, is it, is it, turn your microphones on and give us a little. Um, this is Maria. I'm happy to share. <laughs> um, I haven't used them this year yet. Um, last year I did. So for my senior students, five, six students, I got them to create a storyboard and then create that on their merge cube. So each side of it was a different visual that they created in co spaces. So they they did a storyboard manually first, then designed it in co-spaces as 3D design, and then we looked at the end product on a merge cube. Brilliant. So you've, you've been doing the moving on from the using to creating. Yeah. 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 And, and that's what we want, isn't it? You know, we start off in that using space, but eventually we want to get to that creating space because that's where our students have those ability to use their critical and creative thinking skills as well. Is there someone else who'd like to share with us about their use of um, merge cubes in the classroom? Um, this is Clark. Can you hear me? Hello, Clark. Yes. Hello. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say, um, no, thank you for this because I had your, uh, we have a set of six merge cubes and I had used them last year and I think maybe, you know, it was a bit too new or whatever, because after a couple of lessons, kind of sort of run out of ideas and the kids were sort of, oh, okay, you know, enough, you know, what's the next new tech toy, <laughs> you know? And so, um, and so it was great that I saw this um, presentation because like, oh good, no, there's more stuff now and it's been really helpful, so thanks. Oh, that's good. Yeah, there are so many more um, resources that are there and more are being uploaded. So yeah, keep your eye in that space, definitely. I'd be interested, Clark, I know you're working with um, children with special needs, but at that moment one um, is of interest I, to you, what you think about it on the, at the coalface. Yeah, I, I thought it was that Clark, who yeah. I've seen yes. talking in the special needs space before. And I did wonder, you know, moment AR, and connecting you with that one and if that might be of awesome. some value. Exactly, no, yes. I teach students with intellectual disabilities. And um, yeah, one of the challenges I have in my lesson planning and strategy is I need things with simple um, language or as little language as possible because the, you know, just, it needs to be, it needs to be simple and chunked out into small pieces. And then yes, when you told me about, um, yes, uh, that um, I wrote it down, but yeah, the, that one where 
um, they can go and yeah, see different emotions. I was like, ooh, okay, that that looks really exciting. And yeah. so yes, no, like I said, it was I haven't used the merge cubes for a while because I was like, thought, oh, okay, well, you know, whatever. But it's great to see that there's lots of new stuff. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Clark. Um, Dee also mentioned having used the big one. Can I put her on the spot or is that it's okay if you don't want to? Oh, that's okay, cool. Thanks, Do I move on? Yep, okay. So we're just coming to the end now. Um, I just wanted to let people know that we have some online courses available. Uh, they're self-paced, they're free, and I would encourage people that if you haven't seen these or been part of these, to go into the caesarmooks.adelaide.edu.au link and sign up. Um, they are based on version eight point, or version eight of the curriculum. Uh, and we have two there for the primary years and two there for the secondary years. But there's also the teaching AI in the classroom, as well as cybersecurity and awareness, a primary and a secondary online course. And I believe they're being updated and about to be re-released. Is that right, Celia? Yes. So we'll be watch this space and watch our website for updates on all those, all that material. Okay. Uh, so I would really appreciate um, some feedback today on our session. Um, I have a bit.ly link there, uh, caesar-webinar-feedback, and would really appreciate if um, people could put some feedback there. Maybe, Celia, if you can pop that into the chat. That now. Thank you. Um, and, yeah, I'm really glad that so many of you could be part of this session today and just to shout out that uh, there will be another session in a couple of weeks time where I'll be doing building your own 3D augmented reality for the Merge Cube which is on the next slide. Oh, multitasking here. Oh and uh, yeah I'm I think the date was the 31st of May, but I couldn't remember. Sorry about that. Um, if people found this one, it'll be on, on our event, right? That's right, it will. And we'll look into the whole Tinkercad co-spaces and updates in that space as well. Sorry. Um, we'll be sharing the slides and the recording. The recording yes. will go on our YouTube channel within a, a week or so. The slides, I'm not so sure what we do with those. Oh, I'm happy to share the slides as well. Yeah. And um, and so if you want to keep in touch, look out for us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. <laughs> and Susie's put in the chat the link to the next webinar, which is did you just say it moves on from beyond using to yes. Start yes, it will it will be part four. Excellent. Thank you, Sue. So thanks everyone for joining us today. And um, I look forward to hearing all your experiences with MerchCube.